Now, coming from the stage, a whole different discipline of developing a character in advance, you know. It, 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 but how was work? How is it working with William Friedkin creating character Chance for this movie? What What was that process like for you as an actor? Well, it was you know I, obviously I had never done any film or anything, and I was used to theater and all that. And I got out to L.A., which was also strange. I hadn't been in L.A. And uh, and Billy. Uh, had me over to his house, I got to know him, we rehearsed, we went around to the locations, he, he collected the rest of the cast, we all got together, and this has never happened since. This was the, my first film, and of course, at the end of it, I thought it was always going to be like this. Of course, it has never been like this since. But it was the most freeing, fun uh, experience. I mean, we... We rehearsed at places. We, he took us out to the airport. Said, "Let's see what we can do with this scene." You know, before we ever got there, weeks before we ever went on location to these places. Uh, I remember. Uh, by the way, my <laughs> my very talented and beautiful uh, informant from To Live and Die in L.A. is here. I think, Darlan. Are you here? Oh. Hey, Darlan Fuller. We got to rehearse. Billy would have us rehearse together. I mean, we, we, we got to know our, uh, you know, the, the house and the movie that we were using. He had all the locations done in advance. And we got to go there and, and play with the scenes. We'd go back to the office and read the script. We'd talk about it, this and that. And we'd change stuff constantly. And it was like, when we actually shot the movie, and I had never spent much time shooting, we, we got to do almost any, you know, whatever we felt as the character we would do and say. And so a lot of it was improvised and whatnot. It was, yeah, right? yeah. it was great. Um, you know, to start out when you're in when you're in this film, like you came in and suddenly you're saying, I really have this this part? You know? And and yeah, again, that came from you. And that was really wonderful. And working with you was so easy. We did. We just kind yeah. of just flowed. It was, it, there was never a question. There, there was never a anything. moment in the whole production that it didn't feel real, that, that we didn't feel like we were in the bones of the characters. Did you guys have sex? <laughs> no. <laughs> because you tried. You tried to make us have sex. Yeah. I hear about those things later, you know. I, I read about stuff like that. I never know what's going on, personally or socially. But this, the sex scene they did looks absolutely real when I see it on film. I was out of the room at that time. I think I, I was watching a basketball game. I don't, I don't know if they got it on for real or what. <laughs> I've never asked that question. Well, it, it, it was also cool. I mean, Why mind, you know? <laughs> that was part of what was great. Uh, yeah. Wiley didn't have monitors. It wasn't like redoing takes. It was like if we did the thing and it was real and it worked, we were done with it, you know? Uh, and and it, so it always felt fast and loose. And I never got, I was never tired at the end of the day. I mean, since then, obviously. You can, as actors, you can get really tired doing films because you're you only work about 20 minutes a day, but you're there for 12 or 13 hours. Everybody else is working all day long, but with Billy, we all worked, and then we went home. You know, and it was always on the, it was always a take, and it was always kept, and then we moved on. There were some scenes that we did that I. Couldn't even remember that night if we'd done it. You know, it was like so fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when we, when we did the the sex scenes, which you know, and it was, it, and really, um, I didn't know how I'd feel about it, but it was just so easy. And Robbie Mueller was there, and you were there, and you you, you came in and show me what you want me to do. You know what, what we need to do. Well, we sort of got to do and what we, we wanted we to did. do. We yeah. did. We did exactly. And I didn't did. know how to do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was brought up in a very cloistered. Uh, <laughs> Now, Billy, your your philosophy of working with actors does it change from film to film? I mean, how do you how do you get them to the place where they can inhabit the part with that kind of spontaneity? I think that's a good question. The the one thing I think that a director's responsibility is the main responsibility of a director is not to put his or her personal touch on a film or 
or style or any of this other bullshit is to create an atmosphere for the actors to do their best work. That's that's really what it is. And what, what they just described is what I try to do. I try to make the experience fun and not uptight. Um, I found in working with even the greatest stickler for dialogue who ever lived, Harold Pinter. I did uh, a film with Pinter called The Birthday Party, and um, I worked with Harold from beginning to end for a year. And he had a reputation as a guy who you had to do it verbatim. You had to do his stuff. You couldn't change a word. And the reason, there was a good reason for that. The words were perfect, and he knew it and you couldn't really improvise around it. But I remember how open he was. His philosophy really was, whoever has the best idea, that's the one you go with. There are scenes where Patrick McGee, who was in the birthday party, is a great uh, Irish-British actor, and he uh, uh, had remembered some dialogue from Pinter's script from years ago. And it had been cut for some reason because there used to be a Lord Chamberlain in England who would censor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't make a reference to the British crown or to the church or to any religion. And McGee remembered some lines that were cut in this interrogation scene. The lines referred to the crucifixion and it's in a mock interrogation scene where th these two guys asked this one guy who was played by Robert Shaw who was being browbeaten by them for, you know, totally ambiguous reasons. And one of the things uh, that McGee remembered that they said was, who hammered the nails? And the other guy said, who drove in the screws? Which was a clear reference to the crucifixion. And McGee told me about these lines. And I called Harold and I said, uh, what about those lines that you cut for the Lord Chamberlain? And he said, what? What line? I told him. He said, I never wrote those lines. He, 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 I said, what? He said, no, McGee is hallucinating. <laughs> I, I said, I never wrote those lines. And I said, oh, Jesus Christ. He said, he said you, you like those lines? I said, yeah. He said, wait a minute. I have my original typescript of the birthday party upstairs. Well, upstairs was on the fifth floor. He lived in one of those region houses, uh, uh, Nash houses in, in Regent's Park. And he, I waited on the phone while he went up to his office and he got, after, I don't know, 10 minutes on the phone, he picked up the phone and he said, I have the original typescript here and those lines are not in it. And I said, oh Christ. And he said, you like those lines? I said, I love them. He said, well use them. He said, that's fine. Use them. And that's how he was all the way. And I learned everything I know about drama from that year with Pinter. And um, that's what I tried to apply to all the actors I work with. You are free to create. And if you've got a better idea than what's there, do it. 